Hello and welcome to the course on chemical kinetics and transition state theory. This course uh, essentially will be uh, focusing on how to think of kinetics and estimating rate constants. So, uh, in terms of course outcomes, we have two important outcomes. In this course, we will be looking at two specific theories. The first one is the collision theory and the second one is the transition state theory. Both these theories calculate rate constants of reactions. So, this course will cover uh, how to calculate these rate constants under these two theories. Uh, so, the uh, first point is knowing the derivation, knowing the conceptual framework under which these theories operate, uh, knowing when they are applicable and when they are not applicable. Uh, and the second course outcome is actually applying these two theories and calculating rate constants out. Uh, so, essentially at the end of this half semester course, if a, react, a new reaction that you have not seen before is given to you, you should be in a position to make educated guesses on how do you go about calculating a rate constant. That is the main objective, that is where uh, you will be after doing this course. So, uh, there are a few prerequisites that are uh, you can cover rather quickly most of it assumes 12th class knowledge. Uh, the course assumes a very minimal amount of mathematics. Uh, so, you have to know basic algebra variables, how to add variables, equations, inequalities like the most trivial of those things, nothing fancy there. Uh, you have to know basic uh, operators like exponentials or logarithms or sine, cosine, things like that. Exponentials come very, very frequently in rate theories minimal amount of calculus. If I give you a simple function to differentiate, if I give you e to the power of k x to differentiate, you should be able to differentiate that. And the same holds true for x, uh, integration, most trivial of integrations, integrating x into dx, integrating e to the power of x into dx. Uh, complex integrations, for example, integrating a Gaussian function e to the power of minus x square, which is hard, those things we will always provide you that you do not have to know for this course. Uh, simple ideas like chain rule. So, if you I ask you to differentiate x into e to the power of x, how do I do that? So, those basic things you should know for this course. Very fundamentals of thermodynamics, the second law and the first law of thermodynamics as applicable to chemistry, uh, idea of uh, Gibbs free energy. Uh, idea of equilibrium constant and the relation of equilibrium constant with uh, uh, Gibbs free energy. So, there are enough uh, uh, resources out there where you can uh, access these. Uh, here I am referring to one NPTEL module which you can look at which is sufficient, uh, module 5 of chapter 21 of this uh, course. So, one ch chapter is enough. And finally, we will also assume a little bit of uh, basics of kinetics at class 12th knowledge effectively. Uh, uh, what is first order kinetics, what is a rate law itself, those kind of things, what is order of reaction, okay. elementary steps and mechanism. Uh, again, I have provided a couple of resources, you can actually look at the NCRT book of class 12th, uh, one chapter of it is enough, the chapter 4 of uh, part 1 of class 12th. I have also provided you an NPTEL module, uh, these two chapters suffice in understanding it. Uh, so, uh, to give you a clear cut outline, we will start with a revision of the prerequisites, particularly of chemical kinetics. We will start by defining rate formally, uh, we will uh, work out how to write rate equations and all. Uh, after that, we will move on to understanding how to calculate rate constant, particularly we will start with Van Hoss and Arrhenius' analysis. These are the two people who really started the field of chemical kinetics, it is late 1800s, beautiful work. And uh, back then only they had uh, written very fundamental equations on how rate constant changes with temperature. So, we will look at that analysis as part of this course. Uh, we will move on to build on a 
how do we calculate these rate constants from an atomistic picture then? Okay, and to understand uh, how atoms move, the kinetics of atoms, we will need to know a little bit of uh, phase space. So, we will introduce this explicitly in this course and we will introduce whatever is necessary in calculating rate constants which will be Boltzmann distribution and partition functions. Uh, then we will discuss the collision theory, uh, kinetic theory of collisions. Okay. So, that is the first theory that was given by Trotz and Lewis to calculate rate constant from atomistic picture and following that we will discuss the transition state theory which is one of the main focuses of this course. Uh, and this transition state theory was uh, fully developed in 1935, the equation was given and it is still used as was written in 1935, 85 years ago. We still use the equations, the same equations. It is a very powerful theory uh, that is used across fields. So, we will look at this very, very carefully in great detail. Uh, we will end with a little bit of a flavor of uh, molecular dynamics and how this molecular dynamics is used to calculate rate constants. So, the textbooks we will be following, we will mostly be following the book by Laidler. This is a very standard textbook, very famous textbook. Uh, it is called uh, Chemical Dynamic, Chemical Kinetics by Laidler. I will be following third edition. If you have access to any other edition, please do not worry. All editions are more or less the same. Uh, you can freely, uh, whatever I am teaching will also be present in a different edition. I will also be uh, time and again refer to uh, two other books. One is by Steinfeld, uh, Francisco and Hayes, Chemical Kinetics and Dynamics, another very standard textbook on kinetics, uh, but not very often, only for a few things. And also we will be referring a little bit to Atkins book on uh, uh, Atkins Physical Chemistry, very popular book. And once more, please do not worry about edition. Any other edition will do the job. The chapter number changes, not the content. Uh, anytime, uh, by default, we will be following Laidler. Anytime I am following any other resource, I will always mention. So, today, uh, we will just cover very preliminaries. Uh, we will define what is rate. Uh, and before defining rate, we will also cover uh, how all this uh, history of kin kinetics came about, on whose uh, shoulders we are standing on. Uh, so, you can actually look at a very, very good reviews on this point on the history of chemical kinetics in these two papers, very, very readable papers, one by Laidler whose book we are following and by another giant called Pollock. Okay. So, these references are extra, uh, more interested uh, uh, students can go to these for extra knowledge. So, let us just uh, look at a little bit of the history. Okay. So, the history is uh, more than 100 years old, we cannot cover every single point, but the salient points, the biggest of the biggest giants in the field whose contributions are immense. So, the first two names are really Wenthoff and Arrhenius. Uh, Wenthoff essentially in 1884 uh, did a very thorough analysis of how rate constants changes with temperature. Uh, and he actually wrote what is called Arrhenius equation today in 1884 paper. So, that Arrhenius equation was written by uh, Wenthoff interestingly. Uh, 1889 Arrhenius wrote a seminal paper, one and a half page paper that we, I will show you uh, in the second module, uh, powerful paper. And uh, that paper is the first paper that postulated the idea of a transition state. Uh, pure hypothesis, pure speculation, but very powerful speculation and he gives reasons for it in a very beautiful fashion. So, that is the reason that the Arrhenius equation is called Arrhenius equation because of that paper of 1889 of the idea of an activated complex. Okay. So, these people really started the field, they said okay, I want to, I have done a reaction, but I am not uh, happy enough with that, I want to know more. So, how do I calculate this rate constants? Uh, 1918 saw the first paper on calculating these rate constants from an atomistic perspective, 
actually getting a number out. Okay. Then by Trotz and Lewis, it is called kinetic theory of collisions that we are going to cover in some detail in this course. 1920s uh, saw a lot of discussion on some of the simplest reactions which is unimolecular. Okay, bimolecular is somewhat more complex, you have bonds more making and forming. So, they said okay let us start simple, we are beginning. And so, a lot of focus was spent on unimolecular uh, reactions which turned uh, very insightful. Uh, so, that developed our uh, intuition of chemical kinetics a lot. 1931 and uh, 32 and 35 saw some very important works. 1931 uh, the idea of doing dynamics occurred by Eyring and Polyani. Building on that idea uh, in 1932 Wigner gave a theory which is the precursor to TST. And in 35, uh, uh, two different papers, one by Eyring and the second by Evans and Poliani came, they both came simultaneously and so the credit is given to all three of them. Uh, and that paper is the revolutionary paper that changed everything this year 1935. Uh, that laid the foundation of transition state theory. Uh, this we are going to cover in great detail in this course. And the equations written in this paper are still used as they are. Not only that, almost all developments beyond 1935 take this work as the base and develop upon it, make the equations better. But this is still the intuition that is still used today in even development of chemical kinetics. Okay, so, that is why I put this one in bold. Okay. 1940s saw beautiful work by Kramer on thinking of including solvent effects in transition state theory. I am moving a little bit fast now, a lot of work is done. Uh, 1952 Marcus did a beauty, another beautiful work, he essentially solved the unimolecular decay. The people, the work that was done in 1920s, uh, Marcus entered, said I can now solve it completely and what he did is to use transition state theory. That is the reason in 1920s they were not able to solve it because transition state theory did not exist back then. Uh, after that Marcus also solved another problem which is that of electron transfer. How, so, a bond is not breaking and forming only an electron is transferring from one side to another. So, Marcus got a Nobel prize for that. In 1960s Keck has a very nice work on quantifying transition state. So, remember almost 100 years later, I mean 80 years roughly in 1889. Arrhenius had postulated the existence of a transition state. In 1960 basically Keck said I can mathematically tell you exactly what it is. Okay, I can write a mathematical description of transition state. So, a lot of development. Uh, ideas of introducing quantum mechanical effects in transition state theory were uh, introduced in 70s and 80s and it is still happening till today. And essentially uh, since then we have been developing over transition state theory introducing uh, if it we cannot do full quantum mechanics can we do semi quantum mechanics or semi classical mechanics. Uh, how do we apply it to a variety of problems? I want to understand protein folding, I want to understand kinetics of enzymes, of catalysis, of photosynthesis, of energy transfer and the list can go on. It is a very active field. You can open any modern journal that was published let us say this year in physical chemistry and you will find a uh, few papers at least in every public, in any every journal every week that will be on this topic. Uh, so, what I will be covering today you can find in the chapter 1 of Laidler or you can also read the class 12th book of NCRT. On top of that I have also given you an online resource from ChemLiber test. Okay. So, let us start think formally. So, that uh, everybody is on the same page and we have the same notation. The first thing we will define is what is called stoichiometry. To give you one example, let me write a chemical reaction 2H2 plus O2 makes 2H2. What I mean by this reaction? I mean 2 moles of H2 reacts with 1 mole of O2. 
to produce 2 moles of H2. Okay. So, in general let me write a reaction that will look like AA plus BB, I will make it somewhat more uh, general. Okay. So, the big letters in this course will refer to atoms or molecules. And the small letters in this course will be numbers, typically stoichiometry. Okay. So, I have this uh, stoichiometry, let us try to quantify what this means. So, let us just consider one thing, let us say at uh, time t equal to 0. I have moles N A naught, N B naught, N C naught and N D naught in general. Uh, so, these are the number of moles corresponding to A B C D at some initial time t. I measure the moles at some later time t and I get N A, N B, N C and N D. Can you tell me a relation between these N A and N A naught and N B and N B naught with the stoichiometry A and Bs? Can you, can you write an equation? So, what I want you to do is to pause the video, think about this, how do you calculate, how do you construct a relation, take your time, solve this problem and then we will solve it together. So, please pause the video and solve this on your own. Hopefully, you have an equation with you, you have solved the problem. If not, if you have not been able to solve, no worries, we will solve it together now. So, the first thing to note is how much moles changed. So, the delta n is n a minus n a naught equal to delta n a. Well, I can write the same thing for others. I wrote an M, I will erase the M and convert it back to NB not NB and so on and so forth. Now, we will do our analysis. Uh, first, what does this stoichiometry mean? What do we understand from this? If A moles of A are consumed then B moles of B are consumed. That is the meaning of this uh, reaction here okay. by definition. This is always true, there is absolutely no exception, this is the definition. So, I want to find out how many moles of B will be consumed if delta N A moles of A are consumed. So, we do it in a simple fashion if 1 mole of A is consumed, then uh, B over A it is all linear moles of B are consumed simple if delta n a mole of a is consumed then uh, delta n a into b over a moles of b are consumed okay but uh, delta n b is the actual moles of b that have been consumed from this. So, delta n b must equal delta n a into b over a. So, I simplify this 
as delta n a over a equals delta n b over b. And as a convention, we use a negative sign for consumption, that is a convention. So, I will uh, th this equation is true, so this equation is also true, I can put a negative sign that is my choosing. Okay. So, for consumption I choose a negative sign and for production I will choose a positive sign. So, you can work the same thing out for C and D as well and by convention then what we write is delta N A over A equal to minus delta N B over B, this is equal to delta N C over C equal to delta N B over B. So, I am not working out C and D part explicitly, but uh, you can easily work it out following the same logic. So, uh, we define uh, this quantity as the extent of the reaction. And this equality, this is a definition, but the equality here will always hold if this reaction is true. There is no exception to it. This is by definition, this is by mathematics. Okay, so, uh, if this is true, the whole thing we do not want to write again and again and we call it the extent of the reaction. And the idea is if delta N A equal to 0, then the extent is 0. That means nothing has happened, you are at T equal to 0. And if delta N A is 1, if delta N A is A, then eta is 1. So, eta equal to 1 implies A moles of A are consumed, B moles of B are consumed, C moles of C are produced. So, it is an easy way to think about it. Okay. So, we quantify it in this number, a dimensionless number. Okay. So, we have defined this uh, uh, extent of reaction. How do we define rate of reaction? So, the rate is defined to be by definition 1 over volume. So, I use 3 equal to signs, three, these 3 arrows, these 3 lines to define uh, that is a definition. The change of extent of reaction per unit volume, that is defined to be the rate of the reaction. Okay. Uh, some of you might be curious why we divide by volume, a uh, little bit of extra uh, information. It is just so that the rate becomes an intensive variable. We do not want it to depend on the overall volume. Okay, nonetheless, uh, let us just put it in this equation here, let us substitute it. So, I will substitute it for A. So, rate is equal to 1 over volume d over dt of minus delta N A over A. Okay, so, I have used this here. So, I will take A outside and what is the definition of uh, delta N A? It is N A minus N A naught. So, this is equal to 1 over A V uh, minus d n a over d t plus d n a naught over d t. What you notice that this is 0 because n a naught is not a function of time. It is simply the number of moles at initial time. Okay, so, that was just a number. The actual change is n a. So, this is 0. So, at the end I get 1 over volume into 1 over A minus D N A 
by d 2. So, uh, this rate that I have got uh, 1 over uh, volume into A minus sign d n a over d t, if volume is constant there is a big if and in chemistry we often deal with such reactions in solutions. So, when you mix two reagents typically the volume is not changing by a lot, but nonetheless if volume is constant I can write this as d n a over volume over d t and so this becomes equal to minus 1 over a d concentration of a over d t where concentration is defined to be n a over volume. Okay. So, this uh, formula of rate holds true only for constant volumes. In this course at least we are going to stick to this definition, we are going to assume volume is constant. So, in summary today we have looked at a brief history of chemical kinetics uh, and we have looked at the very fundamental definition of rate uh, as 1 over volume into d extent of reaction over dt. And at constant volume we have uh, proven that the rate of the reaction is given by this equation. Uh, we have explicitly showed it for one term rate equal to minus d n a over d t, but it is also easy to show it for these three other terms. Uh, in the next module we will look into what is rate constant and uh, elementary reactions. Thank you very much.